were concerned with developing a rigorous abstract theory which, following the line set out by Mill, depicted economic actors and actions that stood separate from the broader culture and social structure. On the other hand, Alfred Marshall, who saw economics as basically about the understanding of economic empirical reality, argued that economic actors and activity must be understood in a much richer context. He expressed concern that economic theory vastly oversimplified to the point of misspecifying what was going on. And to quote him, this has led people to to suppose that the foundations of economics be narrower and less closely in touch with the actual conditions of life than they actually are. I note that Marshall's discussion in his Principles and Elsewhere of the factors molding the economic behavior of consumers and firms placed considerable weight on habit, customs, beliefs as to what is appropriate, and other aspects of the cultural environment. However, Marshall's lead here was in general not followed in the developing neoclassical tradition that he helped to spawn. I suggest that the rise and fall of the American institutional economics camp during the first half of the 20th century and the argument it had with the rising camp of neoclassical economists was largely about whether economics as a discipline should be an integral part of general social science, treating culture and social structure as fundamental influences on economic activity, and seeing economic activity as having broad cultural and social effects, or whether economics should be a standalone discipline, with interactions with the broader aspects of human life ignored as outside of its purview. Institutional economists like Thorsten Veblen were as much sociologists, as that field was emerging at that time, as economists. And indeed, many neoclassical economists expressed doubt that what Veblen was doing was economics at all. The institutionalists were a strong force in American economics throughout the first half of the 20th century. A number of the presidents of the American Economic Association came from their camp. But in the years after World War II, it was the neoclassicalists who clearly were winning and won the battle for the hearts and minds of the coming generation of economists. And by the mid-1960s, there was hardly any institutional economics being taught in the major American universities. Today, I would bet that very few economists know anything of that tradition. As a result, the notion that what goes on in economic activity should be understood as influenced by and influencing a broader social and cultural context is not there in the theory that most economists have in their heads or in the kind of economics new entrants to the field are taught. As I have noted, there are exceptions particularly on the part of economists whose research is oriented by empirical questions and whose approach is pragmatic and inductive. There are also, and they're here, a few theorists who take a broad perspective on what economics is about. But for the most part, economists are not encouraged by the norms of the discipline to think of economics as an integral part of a more general social science. As the discussion yesterday and a bit this morning signals, I scarcely am alone in believing that this is a serious problem. However, perhaps my view of the problem and my experience are somewhat different from those of others here, and therefore talking about that a little bit can add something to the discussion. Both when I was at Yale and during the period when I was active on the Columbia faculty, I championed activities that had as one of their objectives to enable economics graduate students to broaden out their education and training beyond the confines of what they were getting in their department. I found that among graduate students, there was a non-trivial interest in such an orientation, particularly among students that had a strong empirical interest in a class of economic phenomena or policy problems. As I have noted, Today, many economists, who I'm defining as researchers whose PhD is in economics, 
are studying their problems with a quite broad perspective. I note as one example, studied by some economists, of the factors behind the very weak educational performance of many poor minority kids, which has looked seriously at issues like one might call the culture of poverty and at the influence of low skills and associated poverty on how these people live the rest of their lives. Another example was research on innovation, where Ned Phelps is far from alone among economists in exploring the broad social and cultural contexts that stimulate or deter or influence the focus of that activity. Well, here I would like to propose that a considerable number of the economists doing this kind of research have their homes outside of academic economics departments. They are in professional schools like law, social work, education, public health, business, or public policy. Most of this kind of research on innovation, for example, is done by economists, is being done by people who have their appointments in research centers defined in terms of study of innovation or science and technology policy at universities, but not in economics departments. So a lot of the work by economists done with the orientation that many of us here would like to foster is in fact being done, but not in economics departments. And there are two consequences and problems with this. First, much of this work is not published in mainline economic journals. And economists in economics departments are unaware of it. Therefore, when they start out, working in fields like these, they almost start from scratch and getting into the relevant literature comes as a, as a great surprise, an adventure for them. Second, in general, these clusters of economic research away from economics departments are not places that train the next generation of economists. But anyhow, I hope these observations have added some new material to our continuing discussion.